This is the uh, session of April 11th, 2022 of the uh, Volkslied group um, with uh, Judith Frieschi. And um, uh, we are absolutely delighted to have you. And we are all great admirers of your work. And some of us are very old friends. And uh, so um, you suggested we look at that um, beautiful section you have in your book on um, songs. Um, as opposed to Hazanas, Davin, and you know, uh, and other genres, which is is, is very helpful. Um, so, do you want to kind of give us an opening, you know, thoughts about what what you'd like to do? Uh, yes, uh, it's a very hard uh, exercise that I'm trying to um, do and test myself today. It's, it's almost impossible to talk about the songs in, in 45 minutes. <laughs> and, and there is no such a thing as summarizing uh, all of that happens. So I try to uh, prepare examples and also I prepared a PowerPoint and some sheets and I would like to start with that. So I am going to do share screen and then I'm going to talk. Um, So let me tell you, uh, tell me whether you can see what I'm seeing. Uh, so here is a page uh, where that actually is coming from an article that I'm uh, going to uh, publish hopefully uh, very soon. And I'm summarizing on this page uh, the unique character of the prayer chant of the East European Jews. And as I was preparing this lecture, I was, I was asking myself, what really relates to, uh, to the song? And so I was, uh, I marked with this yellow color, like musical creat creativity and freedom, intimacy, mental polyphony, which maybe I will have an opportunity to talk about today, the mental uh, polyphony and the concept of time, inward uh, turning, uh, then of course everything about the song. But as I was looking at this page, I realized that uh, actually almost everything relates to the songs in one way or another, all of these aspects, even this, uh, you see my cursor, yes? Yeah. So even this like heterophony, which sounds totally relevant since uh, we are talking about basically solo songs or choral singing, uh, but not heterophony, but, but even that is related to it. And I won't have time to talk about all of that today. I'm going to the second page of this sheet. And um, this you found in my book, uh, in the chapter that you read that on, on uh, this is basically uh, the prayer. Now within the prayer, uh, the sound of the prayer or the music of the prayer, people do distinguish between reading or davening uh, or prayer proper or reading kriya. Uh, and singing. Uh, they're, they're, these are not genres or categories that they would talk about, but, but they certainly are very clear about that. This section in Hungarian, I usually uh, uh, recorded interviews in Hungarian. They said this section we would in a Kelly. And then when I would ask them to sing me something, they said, no, 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 we are not singing it, uh, which means sort of down, <laughs> down say it. I don't know, there is that this word in, in this way doesn't even exist in Hungarian. And uh, I had to realize that what sounds singing to me for them, it was uh, just reading or, or, or speaking and singing meant really singing a song. Uh, it, that is a very interesting phenomenon that also I don't want to go into this, but very clearly they, they distinguish conceptually between what we would call officially a recitative kind of singing and what we would call a song. 
recitative um, would be continuous, it would be in flowing rhythm and unmeasured or less measured rhythm. Um, it would be following the text in a different way. The song would be metric and self-contained. So it would have a kind of a stroke, a, a finished form. And these two uh, poles of the, of the um, I don't even want to say the music of the prayer, the sound of the prayer, or the expression of the prayer. These two poles have uh, metaphorical meanings and very deep meanings. And if you read my chapter, you got a little bit of, of, of that, but really it's just the tip of the iceberg. The recitative is on the side of the eternity. It, it, it impresses us as, as a river. It is basically the kadosh, the, the, the kadosh, which is not sacred. Uh, I mean, we translate it to sacred, but it's not the Christian sacred. Uh, the recitative is, is always inward turning, always focuses on the person. The person is really alone in this recitative, longing for God or speaking to God. And I read the privilege of presence in a sensation of eternity. So the person has to be very present and yet uh, basically he has to reach Flakut, I may say. So in a, I don't want to translate it, I'm telling it to those who understand, in a, in a sense, re, uh, communicate with a cosmic world. As opposed to this, we have the songs. Uh, which are always, which always appear in the in in this service, but not just in the service, but even in the paralytic paraliteral situations, as insertions. You have the recitative uh, that is ongoing, and in that there are islands. And actually, I checked this metaphor with a Satmar Hasid who liked it very much and said that you really got it. These are islands, they are very important, but they are islands. And very often, often they are bringing in the world. So a, a, a much more close to Earth atmosphere, more accentuated on the community. You know, communities do have their very special songs, whereas usually the recitative, they cite, follows the Musa, which is, it has a, a, a special color in each, in each community, but overall it, it is shared. Now the songs can be shared or cannot be shared. It's always up to the community to choose it or up to the Baltfila to choose it. It's, it's more, um, more an immediate conversation with the present. And uh, I, wrote here something, it appears, I copied this uh, really exactly from the book, uh, uh, from the chapter that you read, the grasping of the moment in the eternally destroying time. And I cannot explain this now in, in detail, but it's really, there is a, 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 an almost moving sense of the moment. Now, all of this would put the songs on the side of the less sacred or the less, um, less um, um, sacred, again, it's not the less kadosh, the less uh, religious, let's say, but all of this I'm saying in, in, in quotation marks. But, uh, but it's not so simple because uh, I, I, can sh I can close this now. You remember that here is, um, it is, it isn't, it is somebody, it's like, it's not, it is, it's opposite, and you have all these lines, so there is no reason for us to, to watch this any longer. Um, in, in Jewish thinking, uh, and um, I'm referring particularly Handelman's uh, beautiful book, The Slayers of Moses, but that's not the only one. Godamer wrote a lot about this issue. The Jewish concept of the world, and uh, this is will be in my mind, it's very important for Jewish songs. The Jewish concept of the world is 
um, not a way of looking at things according to a mathematical logic that if A is A, then A is A, and if B is B, then B is B, and that's the end of the story, and then A cannot be B. And so the world is, how shall I put it, the world is very classifiable and, and categorizable. The Talmudic way of thinking, and I have to say in, in a global sense, Jewish thinking is looking at the world in terms of potentials rather than in terms of clear classifications. In Jewish thinking, you ask if A is A, what does it really mean that it's A? You know, like the famous sentence, if Socrates, if if, if uh, Socrates is human, human are mortals, then Socrates is mortal. Now, of course, this is too true mathematically, but a Talmud scholar would come and, and, and say, I, I understand nothing. What do you mean by Socrates is human? Who is human? In what way he is human? What do you mean by mortal anyway? And, uh, and, and what, is this, what is this whole thing teaches us? So uh, the attitude would be more to see a world as something full of tension. And for that reason, metaphor is an extremely important thing. Metaphor in the real sense. Um, if, if I say that, you know, um, I don't want to use anybody's name, but if I say Peter is a wild beast, you know, it doesn't mean that, oh, Peter is like a wild beast. It really means that there is something inherent in, in, in Peter that's a wild beast. But what is a wild beast really? Is a wild beast really wild? Is it really a beast? What is really a beast? So, so uh, the metaphor is expressing a tension that something is, something isn't. You can answer to that, that Peter is not a wild beast because he's Peter. And uh, so it also contains, it always contains its own negation and it always contains its opposite. And it is, and it isn't, and it is like, and it is perhaps like, and it is all, it almost li li it's, it's like, and it is not. And, and that is very important for me to the understanding of prayer music, uh, because uh, the shifts are not simply just shifts, but the shifts very often contain the opposite. And I will hope I will have a chance to show you examples uh, to what I mean. Now, I would like to uh, share another very short um, PowerPoint, and then I will go to the musical examples. Ah, I can see that. Okay, so share. Do you see? Yes, you see something? Yes, okay. So now I go. So that's today. Uh, this is what I talked about till now, uh, the conceptual background, the place of the songs in traditional Jewish life, and you find the unique character that was what you see here was the first page, oh, sorry, and then below Davenant, um, there's a song, and, uh, and the, you know, how really one signals is a metaphor for one thing and the other is for the other, but this is not quite like that. And here I write the way of learning the thing can be itself and the opposite of itself and basically the metaphor. So that's what I was talking about till now. Now, when I want to talk about the style of the songs, I've seen that uh, we see aspects that are integral to prayer sound concepts. In fact, I, I almost, I have to say, I almost see no borderline between um, uh, songs that appear in the liturgy and songs uh, and Nigunim and, and Yiddish song, which doesn't mean that there are no differences and it doesn't mean that there are no categories. 
that that these categories and borderlines are are all, all the way crossing crossing over interfering with each other sharing basic concepts and here i listed some of the basic concepts that a song is is always one big gesture and many small gestures. And I think I will focus on that today. A song is really telling a story, even, even if it does not have a, a storyline, the music tells a story, very short story perhaps, but it is a story. It always has a meaning, a metaphorical meaning, uh, what I mean, and it always, well, it's not just it means a story, but it is actually telling this story. And of course, you can compare it to dance and you can compare it to classical music and many, many things. Now, another very important thing is fantasy and freedom, which is expressed in the musical structure in, in, in hundreds of different ways. Um, and the third one is friend, fantasy and freedom in the performance style and in the voice quality. And that's absolutely amazing in, in, um, in the songs within the liturgy. And in fact, even the prayer styles within the liturgy. And, and these are conceptual things, the first three. But then I would, I would go and say that there is a direct connection with the musical structure of the recitative. Uh, melodically and rhythmically. Some uh, we find, and I hope to show that today, uh, sort of the recitative is full of little, I, I call them embryos in this chapter, uh, full of this kind of song, song embryos. They are very undeveloped and very minimal, sometimes not actually. Sometimes they are really songs within the recitative. I'm not even talking now about the songs in the liturgy, but I'm talking about the song-like creatures within the recitative. So the, 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 the borders are always crossing. Uh, there is no army <laughs> protecting the borders. Uh, and then there are many matricized play, prayer melodies. So actually, basically, melodically, it's a prayer that that it's metrical. Now, these are the, the examples I would like to show today, and I'm sure we are not going to get to the end. The first uh, two examples would be examples of prayer per se, where I feel that in this prayer, uh, even though it's recitative, even though it's flowing rhythm, actually hidden, it is, there is a there is a song. And then I want to go to the piece to Michelle Ayokani, which I discussed in this chapter, but of course without the music. And I want to show you the music. And there I really would like to get to the El Odain of, of Yenu Roth, which is a more complex to Michelle Ayokani, number three. It's a very simple song. And I would like to get to El Odain, which is, it is really complex and it shows almost, almost everything I was talking about. And after then, uh, if we have time, I would like to go to five uh, to show that songs very often don't appear alone. There is always a group of songs, like a singing, um, um, you know, a singing uh, uh, occasion around the table when people are singing one song after the other. But actually, within the literature, this, this is extremely typical. There is not just one song, but they jump to another one and another one and another one. And, and, and it is amazing the fantasy with which these are combined together. And then number six, I would like to show this as it happens in the service uh, the recording. And then I, if there would be time and probably there won't be, then I would like to show two examples when the song within a prayer becomes more important and more sacred and more and even deeper in a from a religious point of view than the prayer itself. So this is a high point of the prayer that seven and eight and nine, I wanted to show you a few examples, me singing um, of all of these things. So we we'll see where I get, but, but it's a whole circle. And I want to show a few pictures. This picture of Isidore Kaufman, Rabian student is, it, I mean, to me, this is very, very moving. It tells you so much about this culture. 
uh, this, these are the faces I have seen when people were singing me a song. Or this is what I saw when people were singing me a song. You know, very gestural, very alive, uh, laughing, um, gesturing. These, these, these are both appear and very often they are together. And here I wanted to show you a few pictures of the of the people I interviewed as they are singing me. This is within a prayer, a song. This is 40. You can see, you know, he's really explaining and gesturing to me. And that's uh, the Moshe Weiss, the, this is not my photograph. And that I, I only record it in once. Um, that was the chief rabbi of the Kazin District Synagogue, an extremely spiritual man. Uh, he, I don't know whether he's reading something or singing, but, but uh, because I didn't take the photograph, that he would look like this when he's singing a song. Now here is uh, Hari. He's actually praying here, not singing a song, but you can see the many sides of the devotion, and this is what basically after a prayer or a song. And then I go out from here and I would like to go to the musical examples. Oh, sorry, I have to, before I do this, this is very, very tricky. Um, let me see what I can do. No, I'm sorry, I have to do it differently. I have to open this. And then only after that, after that can I go to share screen. Let's hope. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to um, start uh, playing and you have to tell me whether you hear something or nothing. So this is just a uh... Have you heard something? Yes. Okay, so uh, now I go according to my list. And the first one uh, is part of the Halle play, prayer, but I think this is a song, which is singing about, uh, um, it's telling that uh, God remembers us and he remembers the small and the big, and he will not forget any of them. <laughs> It's basically, it's, it's just very beautiful. Well, so I think in every part here you feel that the gesture is telling a story. You work as busy, so you work as busy, Sara. You work here at the show. You work on him, you work on him. So it's, it's, it's almost a, a song. Now the other one is also almost a song, even though it's, it's, a, it's, it's a prayer, and it's actually the prayer. It, it will be a very different voice. 
very different attitude to expression and tempo. Muriha todo ino Eloheini mehlech oilo Asher kidishore be mitzvoi sov Utsivoni likroi esali It's very clearly a song Others do it differently, like Let's hear a few uh, sections for us. Sorry to stop. And, and now I get to the song that I wrote about in this chapter. It's, it's, um, uh, it's a, really a primary amazing example of what a simple melody can do it as a song. And this is, uh, the first one was Las uh, Lomerach Mesa, which I, I showed you at the beginning. But of course, you can't remember, I recorded him in Prague. He was singing part of the Halel. Second one was uh, 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 Zoltan Shimon, uh, <laughs> uh, absolutely amazing person, also singing the Halel. And here is going to be Tzur Mishalai, which is as Mirot uh, for Shabbat. Uh, as I'm, as I'm, as is, is really the plural, that's how we call it. Um, as for Shabbat, uh, and I recorded this also with uh, Dr. Mesaros Laszlo uh, in Prague. <laughs> Borku amunai, Sir Michel Oyokhani, Borku amunai, so I need a high sarnu, Kidvara dosha. Hazuna soil o my, Hazuna soil o my, Raini o vinu, Hazuna soil o my, Raini o vinu, O Khalni as lach my, Sainai shosini. If we had time, I would, I would not speak now, but I would ask you to, to tell me what, uh, you know, what, what, is, what is the impression. Um, and I, I feel really embarrassed that, that I'm, you know, I'm talking about this. It's, it's like, like, like a little flower, but if you touch, it will close. Um, so these things are coming from somewhere very deep, and um, it's not very simple to, to analyze. 
Somebody turned on the microphone because I, I hear also, I hear the, the noise again. Oh, this is my and, upstairs neighbors that for some reason start drilling in the early afternoon. I, I don't know why so, they do this. So they could make you this drilling please, noise. Well, Chris, I was going to say something. Yeah. yeah, I I just wanted to say something. I, I I like on the one hand the way you say there's a distinction, um, and it's a distinction of um, affect and of feeling between being alone or, or being in the world, and you know that that left and right column you had there uh, between uh, you know the song and and these other genres. Uh, but on the other hand, you you talk about this as a complete continuum uh, where where it could be anywhere along the line. Uh, where where it's not you know a distinction, uh, so I'm wondering uh, if you could talk to the that that um, question of of it being on the one hand distinct and on the other hand a, a kind of sliding you know spectrum. I, I think both are true. That's the point. Both are absolutely true in certain situation, and if we go further, I will actually show an example. In certain th situations, they can be total opposites. And there can be a song which is felt by the whole community as pushing the borderline of what can be accepted within a, you know, within a religious service and, make, and, and people get, uh, there are fights about it. Um, or there aren't fights about it, but everybody feels, okay, that, that's really the, the absolute, absolute extreme. And nobody would feel that that song is the one that we should use for the record or we should use for the, the most spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual song. But, uh, and then there are songs which are very, very obviously entirely spiritual. But the most interesting thing is that the whole thing is in, in constant motion and, and somebody singing a song in one way or in another can push the same song over the border. And, and this is, is one thing that I would like to show with this, this song. And, and then also that all of these things can be a little bit together. And if, if you listen to that song, I mean, this is, it's nothing and it's genius. Uh, let, me, let me play it again. Just one, I just want to play one, uh, one um, strophe. Borku amunai, sir Michel Oyokhani, Borku amunai, so I need a high sarnu, Kidvara dosha. Okay, so. Sir Michel Oyokhani. Sir Michel Oyokhani. Could I quote? Uh, sorry, I'm speaking Hebrew. First of all, um, uh, you could. You could sing this song entirely metrically. It's 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 perfectly all right, and and I'm sure some people are singing it this way. Now the way he's singing it. Um, I mean, just this first line. I mean, the whole life is in this line. Well, it's it's. Do you really want me to sing that? Is it worth singing it? It's not sad. It's not, it has, it has everything. It has, a, it's a bit tired. It's a bit uh, um, casual, as if he would be singing to himself. It's a bit, perhaps a little bit humor, humorous, you know, ah, come on, uh, me, me, uh, the uh, doctor of uh, the China, uh, not, uh, who was a pediatrician, the doctor coming home, uh, you know, it was, it was, I think it was Sylvester, it was uh, December 31st, you know, I mean, I don't know, what are you doing? We are recording this at this time. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a memory in this line. Uh, oh, yes, when my father sang it. 
And and melodically, it it goes to something like a, a lower fourth in minor. It goes to major. Okay. I could imagine a cantor doing a big deal out of it, that then this kind of emotion occurs in cantorial uh, performances are a whole lot. Yeah, almost like a popular song a little bit. And then he goes. Like he cuts it short. And it's like, a, like he's be talking to a child. He could make this more recitative too, but he doesn't. Suddenly he goes into a more and more into a metric idea. And then he stops himself. So I need a high sarnu, Hidvara dosha. But not too much. So the whole thing goes back to a little bit. You can't say that this is sad song. It's it's sad, it's very spiritual, it's very cheerful, it's very secular in some ways. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. So, um, this is a small, uh, a, a, a tiny little song. It's also a family situation. It's sung at home around the table. It's, uh, it's not in the synagogue, um, as opposed to the previous ones. But now I would like to show a piece, which is, uh, these are not pieces really, <laughs> they are songs, mirot or prayers. Um, I would like to show a more complex one, which is, uh, which is uh, used in the Shabbat morning prayer, which is a real complex composition. And I have to, again, um, show my, my PowerPoint if I can, but I have to stop, stop this and I have to start sharing again, going back to basic and go back to me. Yes, do you see? Do, do you see? Yes, okay. So let's go here. Yes, that was the last one. Uh, I would like to show um, this person. I think there will be um, further um, pictures of him. Yen Rot, Hein Benjamin Ben Haraf Shmuel. Rota, I missed that Rota. It could be written this way, but he doesn't write it this way as a discoverer. I'm sorry. 
Anyway, this is the person who sang this, and he was my main informant. Anybody who has my book uh, will discover that there is a whole chapter and a very important chapter about this him. And that's what I showed already before. So the piece that he's singing here is Elodain or Eladon, which uh, is in the Shabbat uh, uh, Shachrit. Now, when do people sing songs in the in the ritual? Uh, in principle, uh, they would sing a song when there is a piyut, when, uh, when the text is not a traditional prayer text, but uh, some kind of uh, usually medieval poetry. This is actually not the case. They can sing a song for anything, and they can sing a song, and they can read the piyut hymn also with recitative. But this is uh, Elodoin is a typical uh, piyut uh, uh, poetry poem that is very often performed with song. Now this is the text of the of the. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you can read it or not. Uh, I just would like to show the idea. I'm not going to uh, deal with the whole song. He divides the, he or whoever composed this song, divides the text to six different parts. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, you can see that. And uh, the first two, and it's not even, you see the last one is much shorter. And I want to go to the next. And the, the, the way it is arranged is uh, the first one is a slow song, a very complex and slow song. These are songs, really. The second one, uh, the second uh, uh, strophe is a repetition of that slow song, but in a different, with a slight variation. Then comes a very happy song, melodically, very happy song. That's for the third strophe. Then comes another slow song for the fourth, and then another slow song for the fifth. Uh, these two are again based on the same basic idea. They are basically the same with slight differentiation. And, and then comes back the fast song. So it's it's really a, a composition that looks like A, A, B, A, A variant, variant B and C and C variant. And then the B comes back for a very short section. And uh, as you can see, um, for instance, here, there is a, a, a really a considerable difference also in the tempo. And here there is very no difference in the tempo, but there is variation. And also the metric here has a different tempo than the metric here. There is a real play here with the, the tempo. And here, here is my transcription, that's the first flow. And the second slow, lots of ornaments. And uh, here comes the, the happy song. And there comes another slow, and then another slow section, and then another slow, and then comes a, a com complicated ending, which starts as a happy song. But then after the happy song, here it goes back to to a, a very elaborate kind of ending, cantoria style recitative, which is really a new style within this, uh, within this piece. So I, I go out of this, and then I want to show the second slow song, because basically we have three different songs here. And for that, I have to open this. And, uh, uh, do this? Yes, that's it. And I hope you are going to hear now. I will just start and Please tell me whether you hear. Can you hear? He's speaking. He's telling that uh, 
that this is, uh, it, he stops actually <laughs> while he was singing it to me, to me, he was explaining what he was doing. So it was very interesting. And he said that he, this section he, he learned from his great masters. Fogalmam itt az én mesterem énekelt nagyon szép muzikális és szóltak. Hajdanálásom. Nem hajdan se nincs kocsánat. Ha ez a főrabja volt, igen. Ah, I didn't want to show from the beginning. I'm sorry. Yes. That was the first uh, slow, but then I did it show the second. <laughs> Sem If you listen to this carefully, it's uh, it's really amazing. He he's changing the the the, the voice quality. He's changing the tempo. <laughs> Almost a whole world until this. <laughs> And it's very interesting, it's in two, but sort of the the the, the weight is on the second. And and he waits. He has all the time of the world, so it, it's not that no, no, it's, it's, it doesn't feel that way. And then the second one, he doesn't wait it till the end, till the end. So it's not twice the same thing. It's not. 
to the but, the but the third one is sort of jammed into the second one temporarily. So it starts like a song and then suddenly it's almost like a cantorial ending. Um, so I, hate to interrupt, but, um, uh, I hate to interrupt, but we, we're approaching uh, one hour. I think Itzik has to leave, I think, after an hour. So I, I, we should try to get a little bit of discussion before, um, you know, people have to leave or whatever um, uh, of these wonderful and, and, and extraordinarily evocative uh, examples you're giving us. Um, let me finish just I, I do it very fast so this, yeah. the, I do it very fast but I want to get to the end of the stroke and then it is comes back the second time and then he does and, and he stops there and he goes so it becomes an upbeat what was the end now but then comes the second section and he comes to a completely metric part in, in, in triplets, kind of. And then he stops that again. And he ends it almost like a cantorial or uh, something. So, so there is a, a, a tiny little metric song built into this recitative, which is performed in uh, both of the, the strophes performed in a different way, more metric or more recitative. Or um, and there are a number of other things which it, it just in this this particular strophe there are there are a no, number of other things which. Um, I wanted to show, but I'm not going to show it. But, but at least that that you know there is a there is a metric, a slow metric in in a kind of temporal feeling, and then there is an insertion which is an almost uh, mm -hmm. entirely metric, and then there is an ending, and this is only a small part of the sixth part, song. So. Okay. I'm certainly showing the, the freedom and flexibility you were pointing to with, at the very beginning in, in terms of what makes a song, you know, what is possible within the idea of the song. Um, it's like, do you, do you want to, do you have any thoughts before, uh, while you're, while you're here? Or? Uh, you're muted, right? Yeah. No, it's, it's just want to say it's fascinating you did and, uh, all these great, great ideas going, going by. Um, I mean, of course, you know, can I say my father also has a nusach that like I'm listening to now. Um, and I'm thinking, well, maybe Austria Hungary has a certain nusach, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> at the other end of the empire and similar to Budapest. Um, Anyway, no, I, I have nothing in particular to say. I'm just listening. All right. Um, Meshka, Josh, um, Ethel, do you want to chip in? Yeah, Meshka. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, it's this is all stunning, Judith. I mean, your work in general and and this presentation, it's amazing to see the, the extension, the continuing river of your work. But the, um, no, I mean, I think as we probably have all noticed i mean the the discursive nature once again of just only the melodic contours but i mean it, at the same time it's all one i mean the the you know 
in the Tsurmishelo, for example, the uh, mm-hmm. Tsurmishelo, the way, you know, it just goes, Tsurmishelo yechalnu, Tsurmishelo yechalnu. Yeah, it's the, it's the statement, yeah. the extension of the statement, then he hangs around in the middle, kind of, you know, and then there's this and this and this, and then, and now we're going to wind up at the end, and then he comes down at, and, and, and finishes on the, uh, on the fifth you know so that it always kind of hangs there as but wait that you know but wait there's more and it that's always just so that's such a deep feature of of to me yiddish music as Mm -hmm. um and i i mean i i love the the idea of the world as you know seeing the world as potential um rather than as clear orderly characterized it's just so it, it's so there. Thank you. Yes, and the, thank you so much. I mean, this is so nice of you. <laughs> so, so good to hear. Um, it's 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 also very interesting that you know in both songs, and it's not always the case, but but as it happens in these two two songs, they both started with a repeated line. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this repetition has a completely different meaning and feel. And it, it, both are rhetorical, but the second one is really just trying to wrap us into a mystical kind of. Whereas the first one is almost trying to lead us out, out of it in a way. Uh, so um, I don't know. It's uh, I have I have no words. I, it, it's just and, and each song has a different uh, concept and and and, uh, and a composition and uh, and a different rhetoric and a different message, if I may say, um, and a lot of potentials inside. So the same thing could be performed in different ways. But anyway, thank you so much for, for this. Um, I, I mean, and the, you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The El, El is is so you know. I mean, it's a lot kind of heavier in in um, mm-hmm. than this than the Zmiras. and you can yeah, say. By the way, you can say Zmiras as a as a singular too. We all a lot of us say that this is Azmiras. but yeah. yeah anyway, I did it too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, of course, it's a very different situation, and it's in the but but you know, Elodan can be very um, just plain happy. Yeah. You know, it, it also it also can have a melody like that, and and that's that's also a very interesting thing that the same text can have so many within the liturgy. Once it's a song, once it not the nusa, once it, it is not the the, the recitative, then it can be all kinds of things. And for the same text, we find um, extremely different uh, musical interpretations. Zev, you were going to say something? Yeah. Again, actually, you had already answered, <laughs> in a sense. But just to point out that this text is really a, a mystical, Kabbalistic text, that every other word is using terminology that the Jewish Kabbalists have been using for centuries. Now, it can be that in some situations, for whatever reason, the the, uh, the performer chose or his, his environment chose not to emphasize that. But in this performance, it's very much there. Mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But that and then there come the the, the happy section. That's that's the fast section, the melody for mm-hmm. the fast section, uh, which also can be seen as a mystical something, but it's it really takes us out a little bit, and also one has to remember that this really this song appears. Um, um, you know, we are we are way before the Shmonasri in the in the Shachrit. In other words, that is an introduction to an introduction to an introduction. So 
you cannot get so terribly mystical, especially not on Shabbat when you still have most of the Shachrit and then you will have uh, um, you will have Musaf and you will have the Kriyat Torah. And so so the, the, the song is positioned in a very interesting way that it is a mystical song and it's very, very serious. But um, it is in a situation that is in some ways a, a preparation. Would you like to make So it's, uh, that already, it already tells that, that you have several things going on in, in contrast with each other. Um, that metric melody, by the way, is was um, is a uh, Hasidic religious uh, song in Yiddish. Yeah. I don't know. You probably know it. I mean, it's. I, I'm not sure how old it is, but it may be more much more recent. But you know, the one of the uses is you know, Ha Mavdil Beyin Koyedesh, Agitte Voch and Agitte Nchoyedesh, and then I I don't remember the rest of the text, but. Yeah, beautiful. I'm sorry, yes. my computer, I think it became unplugged and it died at, uh, just when you were at the climax of the whole thing. But yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but you know, that there is uh, this is it, it's really very interesting what you are saying. I, I also know that it has uh, several texts, I have not heard it. With this text, but it's it's obviously a kind of a kind of happier like the Tahir Libinu and this kind of songs. But he he has of course a twist on that because at and then at that point he starts slowing down and he stops clapping by the way. And he sticks, he puts in a cantorial ending. Da, na, 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 da, 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 something like that, mm -hmm. but very ornamental. Uh, so, you know, there's twist on twist on twist on twist. Um, uh, it's, well, it's, you, um, uh, you, yeah. Michael, you, you mentioned, I mean, you kind of brought up the question there of the possible bridge or connection between um, the Yiddish song and in this kind of song, uh, this kind of sense of the song, you did you want to talk at all about connection to the Yiddish song of what you what you were you know, presenting or what you're thinking? Well, what what I think is that uh, of course you can talk about concrete forms or 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 melodies or modalities or uh, compositional solutions, but but. Beyond that, uh, of course, there are actual uh, similarities. You know, there are even articles about that, and we, we know we know those. But but what is more important is the um, um, is the basic concept, mm -hmm. the basic concepts. And in fact, I think if if somebody is familiar with those, with the, I see an enormous freedom. In, in handling songs within the within the religious school, an amazing amount of invention. I, I didn't prepare, uh, you know. I have I have a song that lasts for um, eight or ten minutes, and and within that song, I don't know how many different songs are built in among them a, 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 a marsh melody and and parody and serious and mystical. Uh, so. So a song can be like that, and a song can be, I mean, if we have time, I can show one like much simpler than even even these two that we heard, like really just three notes. And and that kind of freedom, um, you may not find it exactly in this way in either song. Um, you may, it, it may not happen because it can happen here because the text is continuous. So people can pick up like two lines of a prayer text and make a make a song on it. Um, but um, but I think somehow the concept runs very very deep. The 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 crossing crossing the boundaries. So recitative becoming metric, metric becoming recitative. The recitative, which is recitative, is not never really just recitative, but it has elements of metric. And a metric is never just metric, but it has elements of 
you know, recitation. So, so the, that that whole extremely open world of of looking at. Um, um, I, I have to say, for instance, that I, I really love Hungarian folk song. I mean, I, I think there is nothing better than Hungarian folk or old style folk songs. There's no no contest. It's lovely. It's it's really amazing. But um, but but there are certain things which are very fixed. Yeah. For instance, the form is, uh, except for women's lament and some very specific genres. The form is really quite fixed, yeah. and um, uh, the voice quality is very open. For instance, so now here I don't see any single element that I would say is absolutely fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a sense of proportion. So, like you, in, if you put a, a a very rhythmical song into a into a service, then you are not going to put two or three or four or five, or maybe you put two, maybe you put three, but certainly not four or five or six or ten, except today when you go to Karlebach and all of that. But, but traditionally, no. Um, so there is a sense of, of, of proportion that you, you and, and that, that sense is very different every holiday. OK, so there is there are some governing principles, but uh, there is this, this is just an amazing freedom, uh, yeah. conceptual freedom about what is metric, what is said. You know, it's a, it's it's a total freedom of what qualifies to be said. Hmm. Um, Ethel, Josh, do you want to do you want to say anything? Yeah, Josh. Yeah. Okay, hey, you can hear me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, well, first, I want to join the uh, admiration society. Uh, I, I think you've you've done incredible work, uh, not not only in this uh, small uh, number of pages and what you've uh, told us today, but other things I've read by you. Um, I I was particularly struck in what we read which you've only had uh, uh, time to focus on a small number of things in what you've said so far. Uh, but by the, um, the, uh, the way that you traced the or, orig, or, origination of a song within the community as being composed and then sort of decided by the, the Rebbe which, which melody would be chosen, that, that section of what you wrote. Um, and in, in general, the kind of uh, differentiation between uh, the sound world when one is singing only, only for one's own ears, even if it's in a room with many others who are doing the same thing, uh, let's say in davening, um, as opposed to uh, singing in a smaller group, like uh, around a tish, as opposed to singing for oneself, or in, you know the 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 social contexts of the different singing styles, uh, and I guess I would I would uh, throw up a bit of a of a a, a challenge. I know that emphasizing the freedom and fluidity uh, is your your main point in many ways. The uh, the rhythmic uh, fluidity, fluidity even of repeated segments and how they are different and so forth. And nevertheless, what I what I think our group might be interested in in pursuing and, and knowing if you've um, pursued this is is actually to try to find the limitations because it's for all of its freedom it's immediately identifiable if it's identifiable as a jewish or ashkenazic style uh, sound world 
then there must be formal limitations that, that make it recognizable. Um, so while we celebrate and emphasize the freedom mm -hmm. of fluidity, it's, it's really the, the, the structural principles that most interest me. Mm -hmm. so those are some comments. Yes. Um, in another uh, chapter, when I write about the Musa, I'm talking about the map and the path. Mm -hmm. And I look at the limitation as a map. You have to be on a certain map. And in the map, you have to get in a, from a certain point to another point. If it's a family Haggadah, then it's quite clear what the map is and where you have to get to where. You know, you have to get somehow, you have to get to the dinner and you have to make it enjoyable till the dinner and somehow you have to convey certain ideas so in and and if you have a if you have a shabbat shachrit you know you have to lead your your um the kila uh, the kila you have to lead to the shamanasri and then uh, to first to the shema and then to the shamanasri and you have to take over the, the psuket so Every um, uh, and and then there is a map of how you can do that. And I would talk uh, less about limitations than about about a map. Uh, in other words, I would say that in a given situation and in a given song, in a given song, in a given situation. Uh, you know, you have a, a, a set of possibilities. And these are a lot of, lot of possibilities, but they can, uh, one possibility can cancel another one. I, I give you a very simple example. Uh, you have a possibility to make a, an extremely long cantorio piece in the, in the Kedusha, in the, uh, or let's go to a secular, you have a possibility to make an absolutely beautiful long piece of the of the two Halel pieces before the dinner. But you will not do that. Uh, logically, you could do it. Musically, you could do it. There are cantorial performances of the Halel in the service. So there is a precedence. You are a cantor yourself. You are leaving the Haggadah. But you know that all the children sitting around are already jumping, jumping up and down. And they want to eat. And they want to finish with these two halal, uh, two, 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 two sections of the halal, get the blessing, and then wash hands and eat. So, so um, I wouldn't say that, that I could say uh, that for that particular tax in that particular situation. There is this and this, uh, this, these are the rules. Because when you go to a Hasidic Seder, you know, they can just do get to the get to the dinner at two o'clock at night or even later, and nobody will rush you with Halel. On the contrary, so so it, 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 you you always have a map, and this map is the things that are possible to do musically, stylistically, in terms of voice quality. Um, in terms of everything, and then you have a communal situation. And so um, it's sometimes I can say, okay, this and this and this is not allowed for this and this and this text that happens, but that's very rare, but it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. But really, I just would, would, would talk about this, this map that, that you, you have to walk in that map and decide, okay, can I take a detour here or can I not? I'll give you another example. The, the, um, you want to honor, for instance, your teacher and you want to sing his version. Okay, for that. Yes, it will take longer, but everybody will now be patient and will understand that in spite of the fact that, you know, we, we had enough and we would like to move on, but this is a special thing and we're doing this. So it's so delicate. 
It's so delicate. And then you would sing that song, that very long song, but you won't make it, you will make it as, as fast as possible within that limit. So it's just so, uh, it's not that there are no rules, there are rules, but that uh, the rules are, are put on one another, like kind of. Um, um, you did, can you still hear me? Yes, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think what, what, what I had in mind, I, I understand what you just said very well, and, and that's well explained. But what I had in mind was more along the lines of a, a microscopic point of view. Uh, I, I loved the section of your remarks where you, you analyzed uh, almost phrase, just little phrase by phrase. And what, one thing which interests me a great deal and where I see a lot of overlap between uh, Yiddish folk song that, that uh, uh, I'm familiar with that uh, uh, are outside of the uh, religious context um, and your analysis of the little phrase by phrase is the limitations there or rather than say limitations, what the, what the intention of a particular gesture in repetition. For example, when you pointed out that in the second repetition of a phrase, uh, the, um, the singer continued without dwelling on the last note or on the last syllable. What uh, in Genzen Fieselach, what does that mean? Gesturally, does that mean um, I'm repeating this uh, and now I'm going to go on and I don't dwell on the, on the last part of it because I'm going on to the next thing? I mean, just uh, musically, what the meanings of the uh, the kind of lovely microscopic analysis that you gave us are um, the shift to the major version of a minor uh, motif uh, or a, a small piece of a phrase. Um, is, is that in this language, in this sound world, actually from somewhat sadder and contemplative to somewhat more affirmative and happy or not. Th those, are the, those are the things which interest me a great deal. And I see a lot of overlap in all of the different musical styles and genres. Um, and that, so that's a particular interest of me in, in your work. You are talking about, if I understand you correctly, or you wanted to say something else? Did I, did I start no, no, no. talking I, too far? I just wanted to uh, quote. Uh, that, yeah. um, that your question, uh, your question here is directing me to the actual melodic motivic content. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that's, um, that's another lecture. I, I think the freedom there and the fantasy, it really comes from the Nusach. It comes from, not from the Nusach, but the way the people, for me, Nusach means the way they use the melody. But um, uh, let me tell you that I, it's not possible to answer that because, because the answer is not coming out from the analysis of one song that really it's coming out from the analyst, analysis of, of many, 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 many Musach experiences, um, analysis of the, it comes out from the many, I, I have to say. It's, it's very strange to say that. Um, when you ask me, um, you know, the two, two things are very different, uh, the Tzul um, Michelai and the, and the second piece. In the, when you ask me about this, actually the third repetition, so the first one, and the second, and the second is not finished. Yeah. It's yeah. 
that metrically he jumps in. He lost patience. Now, um, there are so many elements to that, uh, that idea. You can ask, could he do it if the melody would, would be different? Uh, could we do, he do such thing in a different context when it's not at the beginning? Uh, what is actually the tempo here? You know, is it how much it is moving? And, um, and I, I really, um, it's very new stuff. That's, that's, my, that's my answer. But if you, if you would tell me, okay, so show me that, that, that real, I mean, this is a new stuff melody. Okay, that show me a real uh, prayer that is doing exactly this. Uh, first of all, it would be hard for me to do this. But uh, second of all, even if I would find something exactly different, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be meaningful. Uh, there is, in, in general, in the presentation of the Musab, there is this idea of not finishing, not finishing, Against which there is the idea that if you are a cantor, then you do finish. Then you do a big elaborate ending. But if you are a bad film, you don't. Now, how you do the not ending and how you do the ending, that's a very, very long thing. But, but these two collide in this piece. I didn't speak about that. But so so we're asking, I can only answer through like many, 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 many analysis of many, many, many different things. But I really feel that, that there is some gut feeling that's coming from, from that, from, from yourself. But I guess in a way what, what Josh is suggesting, I think is that there is somewhere an overall, you know, if, it, if you want to call it an aesthetic or not, but an overall sensibility um, across these different genres that we're calling arbitrarily folk song and, and, and so forth, but um, it, that informs all of them. So that to make a gesture in a folk song is not that different than the kind of gesture, you know, or, or there's a certain set of gestures or possibilities of what it means if you move from here to there, or the idea that you need to do this certain kinds of things to, to make a form happen or to make something happen that this is back somewhere in, in the mind of people who are used to listening to a lot of different, you know, genres. They, I mean, what they listen to Friday night and then what they listen to Saturday or what they listen to Tuesday morning when they're, you know, cleaning house uh, or talking to their, singing to their friends. Um, there, there is some kind of common shared sense about rhetoric, gesture, you know, and how melody, melody works. Uh, that is very informed by sensibility, uh, structures of feeling, you know, and so forth. Yes, yes, I agree. I okay. agree. Yeah. I agree Absolutely. You, you, do you have anything to yeah. say? Uh -huh. I, I agree completely. I, I, I would add that the, um, the um, what comes from the religious um, background mm -hmm. is, is absolutely formative. Sure. And it's also for people who are half out of the religion, of almost entirely out of the religion, it's enough, uh, you know, people to go just once a year for, for young people, or it's enough just to hear from the next door or, you know, so, so unless they really move and live in, a, I don't know, with the Native Americans and they, they spend their, all their life there from, from early childhood or something like that, it's, it's impossible not to hear it's, uh, because it's really a language. Uh, a musical language. Uh, so I, I really find that uh, is absolutely, uh, you know, formative. And it, it's very interesting. I can see this with people, uh, how writers write about, uh, um, about music uh, or about anything, uh, like Appelfeld, who really, well, in some way, maybe he was religious, but he really wasn't religious in any 
and you open his books and, and yeah, it's, it's hundred percent. I, but I have lots of memoirs of people who, who either moved away or never practiced, practiced the religion, but it was there. So it, it's very, very, very strong. Um, again, even with secular, secular people, um, um, you know, the poetry of, of Paul Stan. I mean, it's, it's just so obvious. And the musicality is so, so obvious so often. And he really, uh, he had maybe a few years at uh, some kind of a Jewish school, but really nothing, nothing really uh, determining. So you couldn't, you, you, you are just hearing this. It was just around. It's, uh, it, I, I like to call, I like to call this music more like a musical environment or, or a musical space or vibration than than a kind of a kind of music you learn at the music school. But I, I entirely agree with you. Yes, in what you said. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. You did. Thank you so much. Your writing is absolutely incredible. And oh, I mean, you really kept us flying around. I love it. <laughs> Very few things do that. It's just exquisite. Um, so this last part, so the first part of the presentation pretty much left me in the dust because I know nothing about the liturgy. Uh, it was so cut off from my experience that I have no reference at all, at all, to any of it. But the second part of our discussion now, in terms of, you know, the whole idea of how this relates to Yiddish folk song. Oh, I hope Catherine can get that. Sorry. She got it. Um, is fascinating, and the idea of an environment and and what happens musically and in terms of culturally from an environment, it's sort of like that piece is the most powerful piece now for me to really think about, because you know I think about people, you know, two generations before me, they they were even if they left the fold, like my father, he, he grew up in that environment. So everything that about him is from that environment. And he couldn't sing, poor fellow. You know, I used to sit on his lap and try and get him to sing on pitch. Um, but it's like, oh my God, you know, to expect people four generations away from that environment to be able to fit in to that environment through Yiddish song, um, all of a sudden it's like, talk about collision. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it's the question, I mean, one of the questions we have in our group is the whole question of transmission. And what you're talking about is so basic to that concept of transmission, how it can happen, uh, where it can happen, why it would happen, all of that is, is totally wonderful and, and so rich to think about uh, in terms of what we're trying to do as a group, and not only in understanding you know, form, no form in, in, in Yiddish uh, lyrical songs, or, or just looking at the whole world of Yiddish songs, but the whole question of transmission and continuity. Um, so I thank you from the deepest part of my heart. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, it's my honor. It's really, really? my honor to, to, to talk to you. Yeah. 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 Real, real singers and real, real performers. <laughs> Well, the, yeah. this is a, a splendid uh, um, way to approach uh, and to expand, you know, ideas. And uh, obviously, you could go on for days. I mean, your your work is so particularly suggestive, oh. and it's in its open mindedness and its 
you know, willingness to go beyond anything formalistic uh, into uh, you know, a much wider world of, uh, through spirituality and, and so forth, but at the same time being very grounded in things like structure and expectation and, and, and so on. Um, so, um, um, I think, you know, maybe we could stop the, the, uh, uh, the formal session or the recording. Um, uh,